how much did you spend on clothes and supplies for back to school, but look at how retailers are marketing their goods. And Jacob is back in the kitchen making a quick, tasty breakfast for back to school. Good morning starts right now. WCBI's Mid Morning with Andrea, breaking away from your everyday. Good morning, everybody. Children around the country are heading back to school, but allergists are reminding families to make sure they are prepared before students enter the classroom. Kenneth Gregg has more on what parents and children need to know to stay safe. Summer is winding down for the Shulman family, and with two children with food allergies, that means getting ready to go back to school now. Before school starts, um, I always make sure to get in touch with my child's teacher, um, with the school nurse. The American College of Asthma, Allergy, and Immunology says from kindergarten to college, being prepared is critical. And for elementary students, parents need to be an advocate for children. Speaking to the teachers, the administration, um, also you can do small measures like having the child bring a placemat to eat their food on, discussing the importance of hand hygiene. Allergist Dr. Alyssa Hirsch says middle and high school students need to learn to watch out for themselves. The highest incidence of accidental exposures happen in those teenage years and they can have worse outcomes because they don't always carry their EpiPens. Children with allergies or asthma should have emergency action plans like these as well as their EpiPen twin pack at school. This is my go bag. The shamans know how important it is to be ready. Eight-year-old Oliver is allergic to sesame. Three-year-old Davis just had an anaphylactic reaction to nuts for which their mom used the EpiPen and called 911. Because we had this experience so recently, I also just regained like a sense of vigilance. I read the labels all the time. Oliver also makes sure his friends and teachers know about his allergies. So if they don't know, I always tell them. Because having everyone at school on the same page could be life-saving. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Woodmere, New York. And Dr. Hirsch also recommends children with allergies and asthma wear medical alert bracelets with their name, age, and allergies listed just in case of an emergency. Well, your child is probably already back in class this week, but you may still be stocking up on new clothes and supplies. Retailers are competing for your money, and more stores are actually pitching their products directly to your kids. Meg Oliver reports. You could probably get this. Victoria Heller is taking her four kids back to school shopping at Kmart. All of them started making requests before they even got in the store. They want everything that they see from their phones. Specifically, they come to me and ask for it. Yes. And what's your response? Maybe. <laughs> The National Retail Federation predicts back-to-school spending will hit nearly $83 billion this year. The average family is expected to shell out $684. We know that kids today, this generation, they're called Gen Z, influences a large portion of how their families shop and spend. That's why advertisers pitch products directly to kids. They used to do it through TV. Now they find young consumers on their smart devices. Um, I see like 20 a day. 20 ads for school supplies on your phone a day? Yeah, I see a lot on YouTube. About half of children 10 to 12 years old now have a smartphone, and many are already savvy shoppers. Amazon allows kids as young as 13 years old to have their own login on a parent's account. I'm looking for new pens and new markers. Nine-year-old Madison Asse saw an ad on YouTube for markers and is hoping her mom will buy them. You're seeing more ads for back-to-school supplies this year than ever before? Yes. yes. I know you guys need these, too. Heller admits she often gives in to her kids' demands, which leads her to spend more. Or hundreds, definitely hundreds. It'll cost you hundreds more? Yes. It's likely more parents will be opening their wallets wider as companies continue to target kids on social media. Meg Oliver, CBS News, West Orange, New Jersey. The National Retail Federation says parents will spend the most on clothing, followed by electronics, shoes, and general supplies like notebooks, pencils, and backpacks. Well, if your family is a cereal for breakfast family or are you packing snack bars in the lunchbox, you may want to pay close attention to this next story. A new report found some popular breakfast foods and cereals marketed to children contain a weed killing chemical that has some health authorities linked, that some of them rather linked to cancer. Anna Werner is here with what the findings might mean.
We're very concerned that consumers are eating more glyphosate than they know. Scott Faber has been working to improve food safety standards for more than a decade. He says the team at the Nonprofit Environmental Working Group, or EWG, had a lab test 45 samples of products made with conventionally grown oats and found glyphosate, the active ingredient in the Monsanto weed killer Roundup, in all but two. I was uh, shocked. Dr. Jennifer Lowry heads the Council on Environmental Health for the American Academy of Pediatrics. We don't know a lot about the effects of glyphosate on children, and essentially we're just throwing it at them. EWG used its own more stringent standards to conclude that products with excessive levels of the herbicide included Quaker old-fashioned oats, Cheerios, Quaker dinosaur egg instant oats, great value instant oats, and back-to-nature classic granola clusters. Glyphosate was even found in a few organic products, though most had non-detectable levels. The World Health Organization says glyphosate is a probable carcinogen. The state of California lists it as a chemical known to the state to cause cancer. Monsanto disputes that, saying in a statement glyphosate does not cause cancer and has a more than 40-year history of safe use. And Monsanto criticized EWG's research, saying even at the highest level reported, an adult would have to eat 118 pounds of the food item every day for the rest of their life in order to reach the EPA's limit for glyphosate residues. Did Monsanto fail to adequately warn of the potential risks? Answer, yes. But last week, a jury in California ordered Monsanto to pay one man $289 million in damages after he claimed the company's glyphosate weed killers caused his cancer. And EWG's favor is skeptical of EPA's glyphosate limits. We don't think it does enough in particular to protect children. It is time now for them to step up and do their jobs to ban glyphosate. Zen Honeycutt heads Moms Across America, a group formed to raise awareness about toxic exposures. Her family switched to an organic-only diet after her three sons developed allergies and other health problems. We want to trust that what is in the grocery store is safe. And the shocking reality is that, in many cases, it's not. We reached out to the manufacturers of those products. In a statement, Quaker said, we proudly stand by the safety and quality of our Quaker products. Any levels of glyphosate that may remain are significantly below any limits of the safety standards set by the EPA and the European Commission as safe for human consumption. And General Mills told us our products are safe and without question, they meet regulatory safety levels. The EPA has researched this issue and has set rules that we follow. Anna Werner, CBS News, New York. Coming up, Neighbors Helping Neighbors. We show you how some folks in Amory are taking care of each other when the morning returns. Welcome back. An idea that started with a church youth group has grown into a community-wide effort in Amory to help neighbors in need. Our Victoria Bailey shows us the blessing box and what's inside. No, we put There's an easily accessible box in Amory filled with food and small toiletries free to anyone in need in the community. It's just for anybody, age, gender, race, religion. They can come day or night. It's never locked and they can get get what they need like it says take what you need leave what you can little becomes much in the master's hands so anybody can use it and we just ask that they not use it like as a grocery store every day but use it when they need it miss gail george makes sure the amory blessing box stays stocked with food hygiene items and other personal needs the youth group at her church came up with the idea two years ago and it's been a hit ever since i think it's a good uh, service for the one that needs it and uh, sometimes you run out of things and don't have it, then you can come down here at the Blessing Box and pick what you like and leave what you don't need. George depends on the help of the community to get the job done. have an auction on Thursday nights on Facebook, and we'll auction items off. Some I pick up, some are donated. We do cakes, we do items, just all kind of things. Anyone can participate by dropping off coupons in this box. 
Michelle Kearse volunteers with the Blessing Box. She says George gets great use out of the coupons she receives. $30, $40 and then got it down to 4 and $5. It just depends on what the items are. She has paid 60 cents before for, the, for like a $15, $20 transaction. George says the feedback from the community is what drives her to keep it going. Well, we've got so many letters, thanks and prayers. People ask for prayers and thank yous of how they couldn't make it to the end of the month and they don't know what they would do without it. So it, it, it can keep you going. It makes you humble. If you're interested in donating to the Blessing Box, you can go to our website, WCBI.com. We've got information there on how to do that. When we return, music and art for one man, it's one and the same. Mid-morning, we'll be right back. Don't quit your day job. Good advice for people who are exploring turning a hobby into a business. But for one North Carolina man, it was time to take the leap. And it sounds like everything is working out just fine. In a tiny shop just off the side of his home, Ryan Navy makes music. Well, it's a long story. I mean, you start with wood selection. You have to have wood that was grown in the forest. Each banjo has its own long story. Wood dried for 15 years, painstakingly carved, milled, and crafted by hand. Just one banjo is at least a month. It's a labor of love, and just recently for Ryan, it became a love worth taking the leap for. Confidence is the biggest part of anything in life. You have to be confident in yourself and what you're what you're offering to the world if you're going to sell it. I mean, as if you don't believe in it, nobody else will. He believes in his instruments enough. In February, Ryan left his full-time job as a furniture maker to make banjos. I've got a couple in France, uh, one in British Columbia, one just went to Australia, so all over the world. <laughs> if you'd like to have your own handcrafted masterpiece, you'd have to wait about a year. Can only make so many banjos at a time. Speaking of time, life short. We we only have a certain amount of time here. You got to make the most of it. Do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. So they say. Words and music never sounded so sweet. In Cabarrus County, with the good news, Kristen Hampton, WBTV, on your side. Well, reading for pleasure is at an all-time low. A recent government report revealed Americans read for fun about 17 minutes every day. Between 2003 and 2017, the percentage of, of Americans indulging in leisure reading on any given day dropped by nearly 30 percent. Well, Dana Jacobson takes a look at a unique program that brings reading to some unexpected places. A beautiful aeroplane with a pointed nose. My mini fresh and fragrant mistress. It's called Lift Every Voice and Sing. In a corner of the South Philadelphia Free Library, there's now a vending machine for literature. Think of it as Tales to Go. It's a little old, but it's a classic story. It sounds pretty cool to me. With the press of a button, users select a story that takes either one, three, or five minutes to read. Within seconds, the cylinder spits out a modern-day papyrus scroll. Wow, that's a long one. Yeah. yeah. What I love about this project is that it gives us something a little bit old, a piece of paper, to have that tactile moment. Andrew Nurkin helped bring the kiosks to the Philadelphia Library. It uses a really interesting new technology, the kind of ATM machine of short stories, to make it delightful and joyful at the same time. But what's old is new again. So yeah, exactly. In an effort to promote literacy, Philadelphia is one of four American cities installing the short story ATMs in public libraries. There are 35 dispensers in various locations across North America and 180 worldwide. Any minute that you can spend engaging with the written word um, is advancing literacy, and if it brings joy just for that minute or five minutes, that's great. This joie de vivre comes courtesy of French company Short Edition, which makes the machines and manages a catalog of more than 100,000 stories. Come sheep, oh sheep, the certain lot of peace. The tales vary in tone and style. 
I have felt real dread, which resembled all things being equal. That they could, that's pretty sad. <laughs> <laughs> they are free and guilt-free. Some people would say, oh no, this is bad, it's paper. Mm -hmm. But this isn't. No, so the paper is all environmentally friendly, the ink is biodegradable, so it's environmentally conscious and, and certainly recyclable. Film director Francis Ford Coppola is the godfather of short story ATMs. In 2016, he brought the first American dispenser to his cafe in San Francisco. I love the idea of a vending machine, a dispensing machine that doesn't dispense potato chips or beer or coffee for money but gives you art. Oh, this is from William Shakespeare. I was totally in the dark. First I bumped into my bed, then I bumped into my closet. In a constant and instant world, filled with transitory and transactional interactions, these stories transport us, if only for a minute. All right, Mom always said, what you need is a good, hearty breakfast. Jacob has the dish just for you. He's cooking up a storm next on Mid-Morning. Cooking up a storm is brought to you by Kroger. Fresh food, low prices. Welcome back, everybody. Fix it and forget it. That's one of our favorite things about making a breakfast casserole. They also disappear pretty quickly. Meteorologist Jacob Dickey is in the kitchen this morning cooking up a storm with something to get your day started. And back to school, this is what you're calling sort of a back to school That's breakfast right. casserole. That's right. We've been doing our summer series where we kind of stray away from the crock pot. But mm -hmm. I figure since we are back to school and things like that, why not have a quick meal that you can make for the kids? They'll love it in the morning and you'll love it too. Uh, so just very much an uh, easy thing to do for the crock pot and have a great hearty breakfast to start your day off right. I love it. All right, so let's go ahead and okay. get started here. So we're going to talk about the ingredients first. Uh, this is going to be a tater tot casserole, a okay. version of that. That would be a good start in my daughter's and, book. And she likes tater, tater tots. tots. Yeah. yeah. And uh, then we're going to add some our, our basic ingredients. We want eggs, our meat, and our cheese. And mm -hmm. so I've got some ham. I also have some mixed sausage and bacon in there. And you can choose okay. one, all. We're going to do all because okay. it's the best way to do it. But uh -huh. maybe you just want ham or whatnot. Then I also did some mixed bell peppers. Kids won't even notice they're in there. Even a little chopped spinach in there. Uh, we, we'll somehow he will put some spinach somehow in. Somehow <laughs> I will always sneak that in there. And okay. that's what we're doing today for that. And it's as easy as in our crock pot. We just spray it. And once okay. we've got it sprayed in there, we just start layering things. So that's what I'm going to okay. start doing. So I'm going to put a layer of our... Our tater tots well, the let me ask you about the tater tots. So if I buy a bag of, say, frozen tater tots, do I need to put them in the oven first or just put them in there just like this? Put them on in. They are still okay. frozen here. I just pulled them out of the freezer. We okay. put a layer in the bottom there. And then we're just going to layer through with everything and roll on down the line. So I'm going to okay. stick a little bit of peppers in here. Some of the peppers and onions. Nice handful in there. All right. And then nice color because I love color mm -hmm. in my food. Onions. Onions. Chop up an onion. And you can do about a whole, one whole onion and maybe two pe peppers in there. Okay. Whatever you want. Of course, in a casserole style dish. Whatever you, you like, whatever That's you exactly like. That's exactly right. Whatever you want the kids to have and they not really see it, put it in there. That's exactly right. We just put a little spinach in there to make us feel better about our, All right. our, our choices here. Because <laughs> there is uh, some bacon and sausage There is. There is a lot of bacon and sausage in here. All right. I'm going to sprinkle some of that on in. Okay. And again, this is just a layering is all we're doing. That is it. Yep, just a layer there. Here's our diced ham. Diced ham, and uh, if you could dice it yourself, or at Kroger, they've got some nice diced ham that's already in the store. Even okay. they have some sausage and stuff pre-cooked, too. All of this has been pre-cooked, so that's just a uh, grab the bag and pull and it, go. Pull it on. All right. Cheese. Put the cheese in here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do another layer. Another here. layer. Okay, so back to the tater tots. Back to the tater tots. All right. We're go right on down the line here. This is going to go a long way, too, you know? It really is. is so, a yeah, big family here. or you have friends over or something like that. Mm -hmm. Even on the weekend, uh, think of a Saturday morning football's coming up, starting mm -hmm. off their day with this. Yeah. How great would that be? I like that idea. Put some spinach in there, just kind of evenly spread it around. And the breakfast casserole I typically make is one that you prepare at night. You put it in your casserole dish and put it in the refrigerator. This one, you just kind of do it all at once and then let it go. Yep. I don't know. I'll let you set those off to the all side. All right. Put some of these in here. here, peppers. And I'm going to do two layers here by the time all is said and done, but sometimes you can get a third layer. We'll okay. end up with some, some taters and some cheese on, on top there. All right. But your last thing is always going to be the cheese is that the is last exactly thing right. on top. Yeah, we're okay. going to save that there. So. so we're done with these. Yep. Also. And I'm going to okay. pour the rest of those on. And right. the rest of my cheese on top there. There all we right. go. Okay. So there's that. So we're almost done there. All we have to do now is make our egg mixture real quick. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, what I'm going to do with that is we're going to take some eggs here. I got okay. a dozen eggs. All right, we got about a minute. All right, a dozen eggs and a little bit of flour. Okay. 
put in flour, about two, three, maybe four tablespoons, just kind of depends. Okay. Now I got about a cup of milk in here. And if you want to grab that salt and pepper, just a little bit in there for okay. some flavor. Go ahead and pour just that on in. Just a little bit. Is that good? Yeah, that's it right there. All Perfect. Right. Now I'm just going to blend this up. All and right. what I do when I mix this them. here, when I mix this here, mm -hmm. I pour it in on top when I'm done. So ah. I'll keep blending it until it's smooth. Okay. And we would pour it on in there. Okay. So, so all over the top. That's exactly right. Okay. All on top, cover it, and it'll be low and slow, six to eight hours. So cool. go to bed. Okay. Get up in the morning, it's ready to go. So let's grab here this real quick. All and, right. Uh, I'm going to pull this to the side. Got it. I hope we can sneak this in real quick. I've I been waiting we for this We'll have all a break. Day. We have a quick break and come back. So, oh, wow. Look yeah, at that. that. It's bubbling all up. I'll pull a little scoop out here and maybe we'll save the tasting for it. Sure. There we go. Wow. It smells great. I smell the bell pepper in there. That looks delicious. Put another big old scoop on top. You don't Look need any else with this. There, you don't need toast or biscuits or anything. When we come mm. back, we'll give it a try. And don't forget, this will go on our mid morning Facebook page, this recipe. We'll be back. Stay with us. This looks good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, are we back? See, <laughs> we're back. We've got about 20 seconds. We'll put the recipe on the mid-morning Facebook page. I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. It's Jacob's Back to School mm. Mm -mm, Breakfast Casserole. This is a lot. This is a pretty hearty start mm -hmm. to the day. A cup of orange juice, maybe some coffee on the side. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Mmm.